Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you to a suburb west of Sydney in New South Wales where two classic vehicles will be featured in this week's Classic Restos on the road. How good is this? No breeze, the sun is shining, blue sky. Why would you want to live anywhere else? That TV antenna up there, that'd have to increase the value of the joint, wouldn't it? When it comes to toys, it's not always about how many. In this case, it's about the quality. We have an amazing 1960 Series 62 Cadillac Coupe and a pristine 1969 El Camino. But first, let's go meet this bloke. Meet Terry Osmond. Like many of us, Terry has been interested in all things automotive since the days of the high dramatic transmission being state-of-the-art technology. From nine to five, except for today, Terry is a CNC machinist. So Terry's trained eye for mechanical detail is a very good one. The Cadillac is stunning. His El Camino is amazing. It's time now to go take a closer look. Welcome, Terry, to today's show, uh, as I welcome you standing in your own backyard. Thanks, Fletch. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. You put on a beautiful day for it. I organised it yesterday afternoon. I didn't have much time. You've done well in that short time. Thanks, mate. Now, two cars, beautiful cars. Uh, before we feature these cars, just a little bit about yourself. Now, you have a property that's in regional New South Wales, a bit of a distance from here. How long's the dirt road to get into the farm? Uh, it's a family farm, it's not my farm, and it's the other side of Canberra. It's 80 k's of gravel each way to get in and out. All these cars have been here, as every car I've ever owned, and I sort of believe that it's nice to have them looking good, but if you've got to do something practical with them, they've got to be up to the task. OK, we have some photos up on screen now. Uh, the early 20s car uh, stuck there in the river, or not stuck in the river, but crossing the river. What's the story with that shot? Oh, that's just the last bit. You, there's a creek crossing near the house. Uh, you'll notice the car's got chains on it because in winter the roads are pretty bad down that way. And um, But they don't seem to be as wet these days. The seasons are drying a little, but... Uh, they all have to get there and they come back and they all have their wheels removed and cleaned and and then they look like this. Terry, this is what the transport industry uh, experienced uh, in a bygone era when main roads were dirt roads. We've only got to see the driveway into the family farm. Uh, a car, you know, all crossed up there at a 45 degree angle and uh, we see a shot of the Cadillac um, on the dirt road as well. These cars, as pristine as they are, they're not shy of uh, doing any work on the dirt. No, they go there. They're driven sedately. They're not driven at speed or anything. They're practical cars. They're beautiful cars. They're show cars. They're trophy-winning cars. But come weekend and you've got a job to do down the farm, they spring into action at a different level, don't they? Well, in their day, that's what they did. They all laboured on these sorts of roads. and yeah, Most people wouldn't do it, but it's what I have to do. Now, having classic cars, sometimes we see the bad side as well. We have to experience the ugly side. In your case, something happened to the El Camino. It would be about six years ago. Um, it happened here locally. Um, going to work one morning, a kangaroo come down off the embankment, clouded it at about 70, 80 kilometres an hour. It wasn't drivable. It was a tow truck job to get it home. But luckily, Shannon's come to the party and repaired it for me. Let's get back to the Cadillac again. Uh, I think it's a, it's a beautiful car. You've had this a long time. How many years now? it would be 20 years. Okay, we've got the factory 390 up front. Uh, been a good car over that time? Yeah, I've done about, I'd say, 50, 
thousand miles in it. I've replaced a water pump, a fan clutch, and a brake booster, and that's about it. So that's a lot to be said for something that was made back in 1960, and then to go all those decades forward, and then talk about how reliable the car is from the year 2000. It was an old car then. It's really stood up well, hasn't it? Yeah, it's never been anything that I'm not game to travel long distances in. It's it's a reliable car. It's going to um, Harvey Bay in Queensland next year for some work, and um, yeah, I don't have any hesitation. I'll change the oil and probably get the gearbox serviced, and that'll be it. What a windswept interior. We look inside and we just see the detail and of a luxury car in the United States of America back in 1960. We just take that in for a moment when we have a look at the, the fabrics and the styling across the dashboard. Um, of course, the outside features, the opulence of the car with the with the fins, and tamed down from 1959. 1959, it was kind of the Cadillac, you know, it was all over the place, wasn't it? They... they they toned things down in 60. That's right. 59 was sort of like very flamboyant. 60, I sort of think of more of a businessman's car. It's uh, very sedate compared to 59. It's um, like, in my opinion, a nicer looking look. But um, obviously the 59 is the one that brings the big money. The 1960 Cadillac was the sixth generation, model years 1959-1960, designed by the one and only Bill Mitchell. Featuring a 390 cube V8, bolted to a four-speed high dramatic transmission, 5.7 metres long of land yacht certainly had road presence. A width of just over two metres and a weight of around 5,000 pounds or 2,300 kilograms, you were assured of the flagship's quality ride on four coil spring suspension. What a time when Cortina cord interiors oozed supremacy and a power seat and vacuum operated door locks let the neighbours know you owned a Cadillac. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. In 2023, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Limited spaces available, book now. 2023 Detroit tour with Fletch. Uh, we've got to make up some camera brackets before we go for a drive, I think. We pop rivet some of this plate to the doors. That'll work. These Cadillacs from 1960, uh, they're, they're just real rocket ships, aren't they, Terry? Yeah, good travelling car. Good out on the highway, but not greater in the windy stuff. Like a big boat. Yeah, but see, by the time 1960 rolled around in the United States of America, the Eisenhower government had the freeways well and truly underway from 1955. They didn't really build cars for the for the tight stuff. It was always the turnpikes and the they were smooth roads as well. Yeah, exactly. It drives nice. We can only imagine what it would have been like or what it would have felt like back in that time to have a brand new Cadillac like this. Well, you know, I guess, I guess we've got to compare it to an EK Holden because that's what we had. Yeah, and that's kind of hard to fathom isn't it yep. you know, with all due respects to our own car here in Australia that had 50% of the market back in the time did a wonderful job the United States of America was just in a different league wasn't it 
you know, I'm old to having this sort of stuff. They did it for like 10 years before this, so it was still yeah. a beautiful car. Do you really love it? You love it, Terry? You're, what oh, what, what so feeling? I think, what? Yeah, at times I've thought about yeah. unloading it because I don't drive it much anymore. Do you like it as much as me, Terry? Oh, yeah, I think I'd like it more than you, Fletch. <laughs> ah. No, as much as I like driving the Cadillac. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lovely old car. It's a, it's a good traveller. Every time I get on it, I smile. The width of the car, the wheelbase of the car, it just does so much justice for the comfort. That's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, it's a, th these were it's incredible, really, to think that 125 mile an hour cars from the factory, they were capable of doing that. It goes well. It's interesting because when I just accelerated a bit then, it reminded me very much of my 72. Okay. Whether okay. just a little bit of the exhaust note or just the feel. Um, you know how you can get into one make of car and or a model of a car and it could be a couple of decades apart but they've got their own characteristic and you could you know that feels like a ford or it feels like a general motors car yeah it's probably it, that little bit of lift in the bonnet they they do have that surge up to 30 mile an hour they're quite responsive in that yeah area. yeah i love the leisure of it like okay we look at seating position we look at ergonomics um ergonomics 1960 we talk ergonomics you know but they, of course they were there we had seating positions then you know you, you still had to be comfortable in your car the the i was going to say the man but the person that was going to buy a brand new cadillac in 1960 they were still looking to be comfortable in it yeah well that was the whole thing a cadillac was the comfort yeah and the leg room you got plenty of leg room in the back as well, well you know, the front. where the elbow goes here in relation to the wheel yep. that feels good yep you know you're not you're not over uh, reaching you're not overreaching the door you're not overreaching the wheel like it it's just easy to do that yes you know so. if you put the length of this da dash pad in a modern car you'd be in the back seat that's true yeah yeah beautiful car mate beautiful car love it there's just something about these full-size american cars i i've always loved them i always will they're never going to be built again and the ones we have left, well, are the ones we have left. To drive a car like this, it's, it's a very floaty experience. It's, it's big, impressive on the road. There's always thumbs up from other travellers. Um, driving one day, there were some more small children in the back seat of a four-wheel drive and they're rustling around in the back of the vehicle and the next thing a sign appears on the side glass cool car and, and all these things they're the things that I get the biggest kick out of. The styling of this car is like in my the word that sums it up for me is elegant it, it's not over the top it's sleek it looks sporty through the air I guess it'd cut a decent sort of track by no means a sports car, handles like a boat, but, but drives quite comfortable. Like, it, it's something that, like, it's, it's not something that you, you dislike to climb into. It's always been a pleasurable experience and one I'll have for many years. Inside Terry's shed now, there's not really a lot to talk about in here, is there, mate? No, but, not a lot. <laughs> no, but uh, there is one uh, big emblem, a sign of significance. We've got a picture up on screen now. Tell us about this V8 sign that was especially made. This sign was made in Australia for the 30, re release of the 32 Ford. It hung on a garage in the main street of Cooma from 32 through to about 40. Uh, the company was called Balmain Motors. I have photos of it on the building. After it was removed from that building, it went to my grandfather's Ford dealership in a place called Old Adaminaby, and it hung there until the lake claimed the township. And as a child, it used to lay around in the grass out at the farm. It was just something you always see. Then it disappeared for many years, and years later in the drought, when the hay shed finally got emptied, there it was still up the back. So. It was fabricated in Australia, it's not done by Ford America. There's no welds, it's all rolled and lapped mm. and soldered. As you said too, Terry, it's very unique. There's not another one, well, really yeah. in the world that has been specially made. I'm not certain who commissioned it, probably Balmain Motors. It was double-sided neon, it still has all the Baker Light 
opening so the neon to come through. Yeah. One day the dream is to put the neon back on it and hang it on the end of the shed. There you go. It was something you could see from yeah. both sides. Yeah, so. just wanted to share that with you. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And of course, if you own a classic, it goes without saying, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And the Shannon's Club awaits you. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. 1969, El Camino Ute. Have a go at this. Is this one beautiful ute or what? It's just gorgeous. We look at the vinyl roof, the side profile. I love the stainless steel trim, how it separates the vinyl roof with the paint uh, just around the cab there. It's just a beautiful thing. How long have you had this one for, Terry? Uh, I bought this about 2012 in California. It was actually an eBay car, bought it sight unseen, shipped it across, crossed my fingers. It all turned out for the best. You just bought it off photos? Off six photographs. You hit the jackpot with this one? Yeah, it was a pretty tidy car when I got it. I've since restored it. But um, I bought it just to haul firewood from the farm to Canberra with. So it was just meant to be a tow vehicle on a gravel road. It was never meant to be anything special. Just get an El Camino from the United States of America just for the gravel road, pull some firewood around. I reckon that, that's pretty classy, Terry. It's just the way it is. It's what I prefer. I've always liked American. Of course, the United States vehicles built back in a time when they could. Totally different era. The world's kind of caught up with themselves now with yeah, cars pretty well in, in countries around the world are very, very similar. But uh, to buy a ute uh, or a pickup in the United States back in 1969 and have something like this, beautiful. Yeah, pretty advanced sort of thing. It's coil springs all round, rides like a modern car. Uh, travels quite well, like it's from here it's three hours to Canberra, does the trip quite comfortable. Yep. I've got a turbo 700 in it now just to give it longer legs, but apart from that it's the way it came. Terry, we look inside the beautiful green, uh, the timber grain steering wheel, uh, SS logo up on the dash there, very Chevelle inspired. They're a very classy thing, aren't they? Yeah, they're like our Holdens, I guess, like our Commodore and the Commodore Ute is basically the same vehicle. It's only the rear that changed. This is basically a Chevelle. Makes it an easy car to restore because everything forward of the back window they make for Chevelles. Yeah. But you can still buy quarter panels, tailgates, anything you want. There's nothing you can't get for it. It's probably the easiest car in the world to restore. Wow. Okay, so when we look at the dash cluster, uh, that's all original as well. You didn't do any instrumentation work or anything? Re replaced all the dash, everything, vintage air, yeah. gone all the way. Everything's done now. Under the bonnet looks good too, and we have a 350 here, correct? Yes, 350, all stock standard, nothing changed. Um, just a Turbo 700 behind it, yeah. and a 355 diff. A few new parts there, uh, anodised booster there, brake booster, looks nice. Uh, Aircon pump, everything's nice. Uh, again, with uh, equal to the Cadillac, it's the sort of car where turnkey drive to Adelaide and back. Uh, that's how you've got them set up and really it's the only way to have them set up isn't it? You just want to be able to turn the key, drive your car any distance if you have to and know that it can do it. That's right, that's what I'm after, it's, it's got to be able to leave at a moment's notice, it, it seems to be that reliable, it's never let me down, um, never been on a tow truck, uh, any hiccups you get along the way seem to be easy enough to fix so yeah I'm pretty comfortable, well, I'm not a mechanic but I know enough to keep it going. Yeah. So with the El Camino, Terry, is it something, did you just think, oh, I want to, I, I, I like them, I'll get one, or is it something that you've waited many, many years for? No, it's, it's something that come about at that time. There was life changes and, and finances became available. I like this era. I wanted the 69 look with this forward sort of approach here on the front headlight area. Uh, it was only... 68 or 9 that I was interested in. Um, uh, just scoured the internet for about 
six months, I suppose, till the right one come along and just hope for the best. Let's have a closer look at this El Camino. What a beautiful ute. A lot of these utes used to get knocked around. Of course, they were a commercial vehicle. Used to get knocked around, around the top of the tubs here, inside the trays used to get uh, beat up as well. This car here, chrome, rally wheels, look absolutely superb on the car. We come around to the back and have a look at that. It's General Motors all day long. Really neat tail lamps in there. Uh, kind of similar to what we had, well, not identical to our Kingswoods back in the late 60s, but you can see the GM uh, mark there just flowing through that product line. Beautiful side profile. Uh, also the fuselage era as well, approaching 1970. Uh, not too far away from our, well, when we look at uh, XA, XB, XC Falcons here in this country in the 70s, uh, the fuselage look applying there as well. That interior would have to go down as one of the nicest as well. Absolutely superb. What a cool ute. El Camino for 1969. Interesting two little manufacturing traits that they put through the models. I have a 1972 Cadillac and across the headlights at the front there's a little eyebrow and you can see that same principle being used here a few years earlier in 69 on this El Camino. It gives the headlights a little forward look of motion. For if you don't know, the El Camino was produced by Chevrolet between 1959-1960, then again from 1964 through to 1987. With bold Chevelle styling, the standard two-door Chevrolet station wagon platform was utilised, integrating the cab and cargo bed into the body. I'm sure you will agree, the El Camino is a very cool design. Why don't new utes today look this good. Okay, what does this car mean? It, it probably means a lot. It's um, something that I've done from the ground up, uh, had problems with, repaired, restored, fixed, done everything I, I could do to it to make it the car it is today. So there's a lot of me in this car. It's not something I bought. Um, I wanted it all original colours, everything like that. So all that's as it was. Slight improvements to make it for today's traffic. But basically, this car represents me. Lani and I enjoy this car. We um, travel with a camper, camp in it, go to places like Wee Jasper, Tumut, anywhere like that. It's used a lot as our long distance car. We have modern cars, we choose not to drive them. Uh, this is what we like. She likes the rumble of it, it's got that noise. Cadillac's really quiet, this one's not. It's a good driving car, this car. It uh, travels nicely on the road, coil springs all around travels at freeway speeds effortlessly. Uh, it, it's all I can want in a car. It goes, stops and steers. It's, it's all I need in a car. It's reliable, it's reasonably economical. It's just a great old thing. Terry, today's been absolutely wonderful. I've got to give you credit for both of your cars. The, uh, the rocket ship, the 1960 Cadillac Series 62, what a machine. The elegance of that car, the styling, the side profile, it just must be a beautiful car to own. Yeah, it's a nice old thing. It um, seems to be a natural progression. I started in vintage, went to classic. Now you move on to muscle. A lot of seem to do it. It's a nice road to take, experience them all, enjoy them all, and hopefully keep them all. There are some... Old photos up on screen now of some old 20s cars uh, down on the farm road. What were a couple of those? Uh, there was a 1925 Clino, a 26 and a 29 Buick. All great cars, all moved on now. The 69 El Camino behind us is nothing short of a brand new car, especially when you open the doors, you look at the interior, the restoration, uh, a beautiful job there, Terry. Yeah, so easy with the stuff out of the States. It's like it's it's just sort of plug and play these days. There's so much demand for this sort of equipment now. Terry, on that note, thank you so much again. It's been wonderful catching up. Uh, complete with uh, under a flight path. Um, <laughs> two planes are free. <laughs> um, two stunning vehicles on today's show. Again, mate, thank you very much. Well done. Great to see you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming, Fletch. Well, that's it for me today. That is a wrap. Two stunning cars. The cars of Terry Osmond, a 1960 Series 2 Cadillac Coupe, and of course, 1969 El Camino. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. 
I'm Fletch. Thanks for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.